Good evening and welcome to God's house as we gather for worship this day. A word of welcome to those who are watching and listening to us online as well. And through the live phone streaming service, we pray God's blessings upon your worship. It is the baptism of our Lord as we commemorate and, and recognize and celebrate Jesus baptized by John and the fulfillment of all of God's promises in Jesus for us. He lived perfectly and walked the road for us and uh, fulfilled the law of God in its entirety, uh, baptized for our salvation. As we come into God's house, I want you to be aware that we have a family flurry winter retreat opportunity, which was February 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Camp Luther. If you've never been, you, uh, you should. I would invite you and encourage you to uh, consider that. The deadline for signing up is um, January 25th, so that's right around the corner. The cost per person is $80, and the, the registrations are available on the uh, desk in the Welcome Center. There's a sign-up for not only winter family flurry, but there's instructions if you want to register for summer camp. That summer camp registration is open currently, and there is also a uh, grant discount that can be applied for summer camp through St. Paul. All the information is located on the desk in the Welcome Center. Overflowing with generosity, overflowing generosity, I should say, is our theme for our stewardship emphasis, which will be just in a few weeks, January 22nd and 29th. We'll have a sermon series entitled Overflowing Generosity and uh, Opportunity for the Congregation to Consider Pledge Card Options and uh, How Do We Give to God Out of What He's Given to Us with Our Time, Talent, and Treasures. And we look forward to even a little ministry fair and an opportunity to see what board opportunities and places of service there might be here at St. Paul. Uh, those are the announcements for tonight. Our opening hymn is 402, The Only Son from Heaven. We'll stand on the fourth verse for the Trinitarian verse. The bell calls us to worship as we gather in God's name.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and each other that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. But together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. We pause for a moment of silent reflection upon this, our confession of sin. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold my chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights.
Dear friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors of, with him of everlasting life. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may please be seated. For our readings tonight, first Sunday after Epiphany, the Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 42, 1 through 9. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia in verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our creed is our creedal statements this evening with uh, questions and responses. I ask you this night, what is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. Which is that word of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You may please be seated as we join in singing hymn 405, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord, noting that there are specific women's verse 3 and men on verse 4, and the rest are all.
Grace to you and peace. Peace to you this night from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ who was baptized for us. Amen. Our text is a free text taken from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 29, the words of John the Baptist himself, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Look to the Lamb, the Baptist cries, but all too often those cries fall on deaf ears and blind eyes. We fail to see and we fail to hear. Look to the Lamb when times are good as well as when times are bad. One of my sister's former students had this motto by which he lived life. Mind you, a third grader said this, expect the worst, hope for the best. That's how he saw life. And while we don't have to look very far to see the worst, we see it all around us, and it makes us question whether it's things that happen and failures in our everyday life. Perhaps it's issues that face us from our own doing or that of others. Earlier today, the FAA grounded all flights in the air in the U.S., a system-wide computer failure, frustrating millions of people. Those failures can maybe bring out the worst in people. I don't know about you, but I don't like headlines that have to do with death or dying or anything of that nature. We have the worst of our world on display. Wars, the war in Ukraine, COVID, sickness, airstrikes, Recently saw a story about an 18-year-old who was killed driving back to college right after Christmas. We expect the worst because oftentimes that's what we see, that's what we hear, that's what we know. But look to the Lamb. It's the only place where we can find life in a world filled with the worst. Sin, death, Satan. They all come as enemies to kill, steal, and destroy. The worst of life happened even in Jesus' day. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus talks about a tower that fell. The Tower of Siloam, it fell and killed 13 people. The worst happened in their lives. But Jesus has come. Even in the midst of the worst, one has come. From heaven above to earth, he came. He has come for us to give us life, to give life back which sin has stolen. Look to the Lamb for real life. This world is in great need and lives are in great need. And so the baptizer actually confronts that great need and he matches it with the greatest need we have. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's the only life-giving person we need. This Jesus, who brings us the work that he has accomplished for us, brings with his work life. Looking to the Lamb is where we receive life. The work Jesus gives draws us the breath we need, the breath of faith which brings forgiveness, the forgiveness which brings us life, the life which restores death and sickness and sadness. For if death has robbed you and your family of life, look to the Lamb, the one who says to you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look to the one who said to the crowds, I am the bread of life, who fed the hungry with more than just bread and fish. Look to the Lamb, the Son of God who says to you, For it is my Father's will that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Look to the Lamb, for this Lamb will never steer you wrong. Because he has risen from the dead, every word he spoke is trustworthy and true. And so when we look to the Lamb, in the midst of the worst, in the midst of death, there is a glimmer of hope in our tears. Even when lives are flooded with sadness, 
With boldness, this John points to Jesus, not to himself. The baptizer testifies to the one whose life pointed to the Lamb of God. John says, The reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. This gaze of the baptizer is toward the Messiah. And that's right where ours needs to be as well. Not just some days or on the worst days, but every day. How is your life pointing to this Jesus who is the Lamb? Maybe we need the wake-up call from the baptizer to repent, to turn from our sins, to stop navel-gazing. Quit looking at your belly buttons, but look up. Here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Even here at St. Paul, our eyes look up, don't they? Up to the altar where we receive this Lamb who was slain for us the very body and blood of Jesus, given for us for the forgiveness of all of our sins, for the worst of our sins, for the sin of the world, for those who transgress God's law in the worst of ways, for the child abusers and the murderers, for the adulterers and those who lust after those who are not their own, for those you and I wouldn't expect to be included in the kingdom, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life. And before we think to ourselves, but I haven't, we too have. We too have sinned against God in ways that have brought about his wrath. We too have hated our brothers in our hearts. We have lusted after those who are not our our spouse. We too have needed to look to the Lamb, the one whose cross points to Easter, Easter, which points to the mercy seat of God where the payment is accepted for our sins. St. Paul says, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So if you look to the lamb and you're made new in this lamb, quit looking back. Quit looking back to the old way of life, but look forward to this Jesus who makes all things new. Even you. In South Dakota, I had a wonderful privilege. I had an opportunity I never thought I'd have. I got to visit the prison. I got to go into the women's prison located in Pierce, South Dakota, and interact with the inmates. I got a chance to see what a new life looks like. When a life that is reworked and remade new by the gospel is a life that looks to the Lamb. Oh, sure, there are those who kept looking back to the old way of life. But Jesus' question was made known to those ladies. What are you seeking? Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Look to the Lamb for community. You will find a distinct community when you look to Jesus, because there you see his very body, the community of believers gathered around the head, Jesus himself, you will find a community that looks out for each other, a confident community where Christ is the head of his body, where he is the bridegroom and she the bride. You will find a community set apart, a community that thinks different than the world around them, acts different, worships different, chooses different ways of living. In this distinct community, when we get together, we share communion, a meal of unity with brothers and sisters who believe the same as we do. With his very body and blood, for the forgiveness of our sins, our life and salvation, Christ sweeps us up into himself in community. Look to the Lamb. When you're stuck at the airport and life is challenging, Look to the Lamb when you've lost your way. Look to the Lamb. For there it is that we find Jesus' words made true for us. Life when there is death. Light when there is darkness. Community when there is loneliness. Someone who said to us, look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, gave us a gift. The gift that the Holy Spirit brings to our lives. 
faith. Andrew brought his brother to Jesus. Peter, the one who would be the rock on whom God would build his church. Peter's confession of faith brought there because of his brother Andrew, who said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. To whom might you say that this week? Would it be a student, a co-worker, a friend, a child, a person you meet in the elevator? Who might you say, come and see, bring them here, bring them to Jesus through the gift of a scripture, a Bible, bring them to Bible study? That's what the world needs. The people of God, you, looking to the Lamb, showing them the way. This coming week, people will notice your gaze. How many lives will be touched by us here and by those watching today? How many eyes will see evidence of something in us that causes them to wonder? How many opportunities will we have these next seven days to pray with someone and say, look to the Lamb and you will see? God will use our heart's gaze. He'll use our souls fixed on Jesus to proclaim to people in their lives, look to the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. And now may that peace of God which passes and surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your lives in Jesus Christ to eternal life. Amen. We rise as we continue with prayer. Holy and gracious God, because of our baptism, we must consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore boldly go to our Heavenly Father in prayer for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all the baptized in the body of Christ, given as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, that they would be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to respond as his chosen servants with faith-filled thoughts, words, and deeds in both their private and public lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the church here and around the world that we not feel unworthy in our service, as did John the Baptist, but may spread the news of God's proclaimed favor in Christ and that those who make administer, and judge the laws of all the nations, would order society in peace and justice so that the church may flourish. And we lift up to you our Supreme Court justices and those who sit in positions of authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who work in the healing professions, those who respond first in disasters, and those who protect us at home, and while deployed in harm's way, that God would protect them in time of danger. Give them courage to use their gifts for the good of all entrusted to their care. Bless their families when they are away, and guide them when making difficult decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who, like bruised reeds or faintly burning wicks, cry out to God for compassion, strength, and healing, that God would not let them grow faint or discouraged, but would visit and relieve them according to his gracious will, using us whenever possible to bring renewal of life and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let the Lord give strength to his people and bless his people with peace and hear the prayers of our hearts that we bring before you now in a moment of silent prayer. Lamb of God, into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for at his baptism, your voice from heaven revealed him as your beloved son. And the Holy Spirit descended on him, confirming him to be the Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you both in body and in soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.